Now I'm a big fan of swales as a tree growing system, but also as a way to slow down water, uh, spread it out, and also hold your nutrients on your site. So most people will tell you that uh, swales are, are the biggest benefit in areas with very inconsistent rainfall. Now, while I do agree with that, here in central Pennsylvania, we get pretty, pretty consistent rainfall, and I've got lots of swales, and I can prove, at least here, anecdotally, that the swales have been a big benefit. So right here, this is a, a plum tree that I planted in 2009. Now these, the swale here that's just up slope, that basically the, this, this plum actually ended up right on the berm, uh, that swale was put in about two years ago. So this tree here, I'll demonstrate, this, is a, it, this tree is really taken off where you can see I've got a line of trees, four of them being plums and three of them being apples, that were all planted in 2009 together and they were all the same height when I planted them. And you'll be able to see the difference uh, between the sizes of the trees based on what proximity they are to the swale. So this is the first apple and this one's the furthest away from the swale. The second apple, very similar distance. It's actually maybe just a tiny bit smaller than the, the previous one, but pretty very, very close and still fairly far away. Now this apple here also planted the same time, but this one's much, much closer to the back side, to the ditch side of the swale. It's actually fairly close, only a few feet away, maybe three or four feet away. And this apple is, I would say, at least twice the size of the two apples that were upslope of that one. And the only difference being that there's that, that, that swale in close proximity to it. And then this plum, which is just down slope of that one, is probably 50% bigger than the apple behind it. And this plum is right on the berm, just down slope of the swale, where you would, where you would normally plant your trees in a uh, swale system. So this plum is, is uh, huge. And then this plum here is smaller. This one's down, further down slope of the berm is smaller than the plum that's right on the berm, but still bigger than the apples that were, that were a good distance away upslope. And then as this one gets a little further away from the berm, it's slightly smaller. And then we have another swale down here near the pond. And this uh, plum on this berm is, is much, much bigger. So the biggest trees in the row of seven are the ones that are, that are on the berm. The next biggest trees are the ones that are closest to the swale. And then the ones that are furthest away are the smallest. Now, granted, it's all anecdotal and it could just be coincidence, but I find that difficult to believe. Uh, another, another interesting point about this plum that's on this berm here, the biggest one, uh, also the, the fruit, the fruit on the, on the, on the trees that are closest to the, you can see it's loaded with plums. This is the first year that it's actually fruited. And um, the fruit on, on, the, on these trees that are on the berm are, uh, there's heavier amounts of fruit. The fruit look better. And, um, you know, the tree just overall looks a lot healthier. So I think that uh, swales as a tree growing system, even in a, you know, cool climate with relatively regular rainfall, it's still very, very beneficial.